Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbook and Craft. Welcome, welcome to the Great Australian Craft Show number six. So this is a Halloween card class. Now I know Halloween's not celebrated a lot in Australia, but I love Halloween. I love spooky. I love scary. I love gory. Don't like the horror films, but I like this sort of stuff. Weird, I know. I sort of I was in America one Halloween and yeah, fell in love. So we're going to make these cards using my chipboard. We're um, using my chipboard and some Distress Oxides. So this is the same card I've made, but every time it turns out slightly different. Just hold it up a bit. It's being a little washed out on the camera. I will put still photos or photos of these at the end of the video um, because they don't do justice on the um, camera. So let's get started and do this card. So you need some plain, smooth watercolour paper, watercolour cardstock. We're going to need our black Distress Oxide, blending foam, and a piece of chipboard, of course. Now, I make and manufacture this chipboard, so we can resize these. This one, this is like a cemetery, like a grassy hill on a cemetery, so you can do it either way. You can do it this way. A lot of our chipboard is reversible, so you can use it any direction. I actually might do it this direction and do a reverse one just for something different today. Um, the only thing that's not reversible, obviously, are letters or um, alphabets. So I just want to grab a scrap bit of paper as well. So if you've never used Distress, Oxbite, uh, Distress Oxides before, they are a two ink fusion in their formula. So they're quite opaque. They're a dye and a pigment fusion. I always forget the two words. So it's got a lot of opacity to it and it blends out really, really nicely. Now I must admit my black oxide does need re-inking, but I don't have the actual re-inker. It's the only colour I don't have. So we're just going to tap our blending tool. This is a Tim Holtz blending tool with a blending foam on the bottom and just sort of do circular motions on the card. Now, the more you go over the one area, the more colour you will build up. And for this technique, you want your card to be quite dark. And I apologise if the table is rocking a bit. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible. Yeah, my ink pad does need re -inking. That's all right, we'll get there. So the darker look you get here, the more um, oxidizing or the more reaction you're going to get. So these inks are water reactive and they react with water so we can get this sort of ghosting effect. So this is all done with water. These inks are also very opaque so they go over chipboard really nicely. You couldn't do this technique with his normal inks, his distress inks, because they don't have that opaque space. So I'm just using a bit of scrap paper to hold the card down. This is just a card front. We're going to mount this on a black card base after we're done. Just use the scrap bit of paper to hold the card down so I don't get my fingers messy. So just going over and over, trying to get the whole card covered. Oops, just a little bit down here and then I'll move my bit of paper. So as I said, my ink pad does need re-inking, but we'll get this card out of it. So you can see it doesn't take that long to ink up. So I don't mind that it's a little patchy. It sort of adds to the night sky. You can keep going over and over it until you get sort of a blend that's like one flat colour. But then if I wanted a one flat colour, I'd just use a piece of cardstock. So I want it to look like a night sky. I'm just darkening up this edge a bit. Okay, so I think that is done. And always have some scrap paper or like a Tim Holtz glass mat underneath. Um, my friend from Hillbilly Scrapping actually sells these Distress Oxides, so you can go onto her website and purchase all those. All the chipboards available on my website, but I don't stock anything that I don't manufacture. Apart from the paper napkins, my daughter 
is selling on my site at the moment. So as I said, these are water reactive. So this is just water in a spray bottle. Now, if, you, if you're very close in spray, you're going to get an overall coverage, which we don't want. So the furthest you are away, I'm just going to put this on a piece of paper towel to keep my desk from getting really wet. So I like to be about 30 centimetres away from the paper and just give it a couple of squirts. This will give you nice little dots. Then I like to squirt a little bit on my hand and drip it to get some of these big drops. There we go. I think that is enough. Now I want to leave that there for probably about 30 seconds. Then I grab a roll of paper towel. And the reason I like the paper towel on the roll is I'm just um, putting my roll back together. I like to roll over it like this because it helps to pick up the, the excess water. If you go like this or with a flat piece, you're going to actually move the water and you just want to soak it up. So each background will turn out slightly different. So I like the look of that. If you want to, don't, if you want to add more spots, you can add more spots. That is looking really, really cool. Um, you can go back and add more ink. Just beware to dry this completely if you want to go back and add some more ink. It's almost touch dry, but we're going to give it a bit of a dry with the heat tool. So it will curl a little. But it will stick down flat when we go and put it on our card. Now, to decorate our chipboard piece... We're going to actually give it a layer of purple first. So the first one I was using is black soot in the Distress Oxide, and this is wilted violet. So I'm just going to do the um, ink pad directly on the piece of chipboard because I want to cover it all with the wilted violet. So just be a bit careful with these top bits. They are a little fragile. I see nice and fine. I'm getting this all over my fingers. That is cool. Sorry, I'll put my hands up so the table's not wobbling. I can feel the table wobbling. So we've got a base of purple on it. Just want to give that a quick dry. When using, I'm going to wait until I finish drying. When using chipboard, these oxide inks go very nicely over the top and will cover it. His original distressed inks. Are very translucent and they'll just soak in so if you're using a translucent ink um, put a coat of white gesso or white paint on it first if you're not getting the right color you want but these ones go on really nicely now I want to give this a bit of a spray with um, the water just a little bit just to oxidize it and make it go white a little bit So as you can see, we've got some white detailing here and here. So if we place it on here, you'll see that we've got some white happening. Now I want to take my black oxide ink pad and I want to sort of go around the edges. And I'm actually going to do this with the ink blending tool. So I just want to sort of add a bit of, you can see that dark bit of the edge. So I want to stay away from the middle. I just want to come in a little bit, just to add a little bit of shadow to it. I'm going to turn it around and whoops, do the top. So I don't really want to get harsh lines on this, so I'm just dabbing it very, very gently. And then we're going to keep putting it back on our background to see what it looks like. So this background is actually going to be mounted on a black card. So you see the colours will pop. I'll cut it down in a minute. Colours will pop a lot more. What I've actually done is I have stamped on the top of the oxide. I find the light colours, so for example the, what's that one? Twisted Citron and Wild Honey stamp really nicely over the dark one. So I just want to add a bit more detail to it. I love the chipboard because you can keep adding layers to it. This is just a little broom stamp, like a witch's broom, but I like the end. It almost looks like, like grass. So I'm just going to use the end bit to add a bit more detail to this. 
So I'm just going to pop it in and just randomly stamp. I know it's a bit hard to see. I'll see if I can zoom this in when I edit it so you can see it a bit closer. Um, but we've just got little bits of green and then I'm going to add a, I can add a little bit of black. So just being quite random with it, this is sort of, um, I don't think I've got any black on it. Ah, there we go. I wasn't pressing hard enough. As I said, my ink pad needs to get um, re-inked. You can purchase re-ink as well. So now you can see the black on it. So just wanting to add a bit more detail to it so it doesn't look like a flat piece of chipboard. The chipboard's great. It stands up to a lot of inking and moisture. So now we're going to cut, I like that, that looks really, really cool. We're going to cut this card front down to fit our card bases. The reason I don't do that first is it's sometimes easier to have a bit more real estate to ink around. So our card bases are just a standard A, A4 sheet of paper cut in half and fold in half. So we need to do this just under four, just under six. So I need to go, and you can choose what side you want to cut it off, whatever is more interesting. So I want to go to five and three quarters. Oh, wrong blading. I always do that. That's the scoring blading because I was scoring my um, cards before. So I want to hold it here at five and three quarters because we just want a little bit of the black showing around our card and we want to cut it at three and three quarters. Oh, apologise for tapping the bench. Now we'll check and it looks like we have to cut a bit more off. Sometimes my card bases are a little out. We need to trim a little bit more off the side. Perfect. Sometimes even if I measure it and measure it and cut it, it's still wrong. Now we're going to do our stamping on this piece. So I'm going to bring in my Tim Holtz stamping platform. This is fantastic because I can stamp multiple times over the same place to get a really nice dark look. So if you've never seen a stamping platform before, there are several different brands of them. But it basically allows you to stamp in the same place over and over again. Now I'm just putting a couple of pieces of cardstock under my cardstock because I just need a couple of extra bits of layers. I'm just going to grab, this is a really old stamp set. It's probably about 10 years old, so I don't know whether this is actually available, but I'm just using a little moon stamp. Then I'm using the word Happy Halloween. So I do apologise, the stamp set won't be available, but you can probably find similar ones. So we're just going to test... We do the stamping before we tick this, stick the chipboard on, but we're just going to test where it's going to go. So our moon's going to go about there. Our moon's actually going to go... won't matter if our moon is covered up a bit by our chipboard, and then we're just going to do our Happy Halloween over here. So when you're placing your stamps, you want to place them um, like the rubber side down. I think we're going to do it like that and the moon's going to overlap a bit and then we bring so that says clear i've got to swap this around and i've got a stamp there from another card i was working on obviously i don't put things away and you just come over and press and it picks up your stamps so now these are in the perfect spot to come and do our stamping so i'm just going to move that magnet down so the magnets hold your paper down i'm just going to grab an archival ink And we're just going to ink up our stamp. So if you don't ink up your stamp properly, you have the opportunity to go back and stamp it over again. And because we're stamping on a bit of a dark background, we might do it twice. We'll see. Yes, because see, you can see, oh, I'm not even sort of in shot. Let me move up a bit. Sorry, guys. So this is very faint here. I can't actually move it um, because I will disrupt the position it's in. Basically, just ink up your stamp like you normally would. So this replaces your stamping block. This is also great for people that don't have a lot of strength in their hands or 
have got hands that sort of um, like shake and wobble and stuff, you can stamp over the same spot several times and get a really good image. And you don't have to worry about lining things up. Okay, I'm happy with that. So as you can see, that's nice and dark now. We're going to dry that off. I'm just going to give these stamps a quick wipe. I do need to get some archival ink cleaner to clean up all my ink that's all over my stamping press. But I tend to get ink everywhere. I don't actually want those to stamp on that white paper. Let me put them back in the bag so I don't get in a complete muddle. I've got stuff everywhere beyond the filming area. <laughs> So we'll put our stamping press on the floor. I need a bigger desk to film on. That would be great. Okay. Now what I want my I want my words and my moon to stand out a bit more. See on this one I've got the lightness behind the moon the word and I've also highlighted the moon. So easy enough to do that. Just want to grab a wet paintbrush. You don't want it sopping wet. Then you basically just want to apply water where you want it to bleach out. So I'm just colouring in the moon. The archival ink we have used will not move with the water. That's why it's important to do an archival one. And then I just want to do sort of sketchy lines over the whole Happy Halloween just to make it stand out a bit more. Leave that there for about 30 seconds and then I'm going to grab the paper towel again and just grab the excess water. See how that's now our moon is standing out and a Happy Halloween is standing out. Just got a bit more water there. We're going to give that a quick buzz with the heat tool. So I'm just trying to keep things in certain spots around my desk so I don't lose things. Is anyone else a crafter like that? They lose things and things get buried under the desk. Just drying it from the back as well. Doesn't need much drying. Sorry, doesn't need much drying. I try not to talk over the heat tool. Doesn't need much drying as it's not a lot of water you're putting on there. So now our card is nearly ready to go together. We've got our card base here. So it's going to sit on nicely. I might actually just put some ink around the edges on this one. And then we'll stick our chipboard on. And that's our first Halloween card done. This one was quite quick and easy. These cards are really easy to do in batches and to do multiple times. So I'm just going to grab some flat double-sided tape. I'll show you my trick to lining up cards. Now I did learn this off a YouTuber many, many years ago, but for the life of me I can't remember who it was. So I'm not this smart to learn this double-sided trick with double-sided tape, but I certainly use it. I find I have a lot of trouble I just put um, tape over the edge. You don't want tape hanging over the edge like that. I like that. So you want to put one piece of tape all around the rectangle on each side. I've got tape stuck to my finger. Get off my finger. If you've seen a few of my classes, you see me do this all the time. Now we're going to peel off just one end of each of the strips of tape. So we're going to pull off four ends and we're going to flick the tail out like this so it's hanging on the outside of the card. That will enable us to grab it when we put our card down. So we just want to grab each of the four pieces of tape we've put down. So we're only exposing about a centimetre to a centimetre and a bit of the tape. So now when I go to line it up over my card, I'll just move over here a bit so I don't get confused with the black. I can slide this around because not much tape is exposed. I can line it up. There where the tape's exposed, I press it down so it will grab a little. Pop my hand on top and gently just pull out these tabs and that will expose the rest of the tape and I can go around and so just gently your hand on top. Just make sure it doesn't move. Don't want to hold too tight because you want to be able to get this piece of double-sided tape out. And look, a almost perfectly lined up card. Oh, I got it pretty good that time. Sometimes I have difficulty lining up things. So now we're just going to bring our chipboard piece in. For our happy Halloween. So to stick our chipboard down, I like using Helmar 450. You need to use a pretty tough glue because it is pretty, um, it's it's like thick and you want it to hold tight. So this is more like a gel. 
So to stick this down, I'm just going to aim for the fattest bit. So I'm not going to worry about putting glue on the really tiny bits. Once it goes on the card, it won't matter. So I'm just going to go up on those fat bits a little. And the tip is great for um, running along and spreading out your glue. Excuse me if my head comes in. Oh, I said I was going to do this the other way, backwards, wasn't I? And then I went and did it the same way around. <laughs> so there is our quick and easy Halloween card. So as you can tell, they're all using the same elements, but they all look slowly different because when you hit them with the water, you'll hit them with the water in a different way. So as you can tell, they're very easy to batch up and do um, several cards. That'd be great for party invitations as well. I'll set up for our next card. So now we're going to move on to our second card and make a card that looks like these ones. So again, these are quite easy to um, replicate. I've got slightly different chipboard on them and I've got a slightly different word, but they're in the same concept. So we've got the spooky moon lit sky, again with the distress oxides and loads of chipboard for this one. So I'll show you different ways to decorate the chipboard. So without further ado, let's get started and have a play. So again, we're going to use, work on smooth watercolour paper or watercolour cardstock. We're going to start with Twisted Citron this time and we are going to start with a big blob in the middle. So this is going to be sort of like our moon, our moon shining through behind the house. So this ink pad is nice and juicy. I inked it up before. So just going to do sort of a big round circle in the middle, nice and dark, like that. I know it's a bit hard to see with this colour. Twisted Citron is a nice light, light greeny colour. Now we are going to take our black and our scrap bit of paper so we don't touch that ink. And we are going to basically cover where the white is with black and then blend into the green. So I like to start on the outside and then just blend into the green. So we don't want sort of green then black. We sort of want misty green, misty black, all sort of going into each other. I'll just do this bit and then I'll show you what I've done. Again, this black ink pad probably needs re-inking. Well, it definitely does need re-inking. So see how I've got it going um, into the black? I prefer not to bring back my Twisted Citron because I might contaminate the black, um, like get black ink on my blending foam. And what you want to have is a blending foam for each colour or each colour family. So you could probably have, say, black and brown and dark red on the same blending foam and it wouldn't matter but I wouldn't go and use the yellow. My ink pad is slowly dying a slow death. <laughs> this black has been used a lot and I use a lot of these in classes as well. So we I use a lot of my inks, ink pads and stuff in classes. So just coming around to the last little bit. The darker you get this, this doesn't really need to be that dark, but you want it to be fairly dark because we want it to oxidise. So we're going to hit this one with the water again and then we're going to bring in our bat stencil. So I'm just wanting to sort of go around where that green is just to blend it in a bit. I want a bit more colour down here. There we go. That looks good. I don't mind if it's a bit patchy. Looking for my Distress Ink pad lid. So again, we're going to spray some water on this one. Just from about 30 centimetres away. Again, we just want some fine little droplets. And again, we are going to roll our paper towel over it. See how we've got some. You sometimes get the texture from the paper towel in the design when you roll over it. 
and that's kind of cool as well. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a dry. take my paper tail away because I'm finished with that. Now I'm going to bring back in my black soot. I'm going to find my batty stencil. This stencil I make and manufacture for the website and all our stencils are back in stock. Yay, my plastic arrived. It sat in China waiting to get on a plane for quite a while. I was worried it wouldn't arrive in time. So what I'm doing is this is a blending brush and it's basically a very tight haired brush that you can apply ink through stencils and it works really well. I can do it with the blending tool. Personally, I prefer the blending brush when I'm doing it through stencils. I get much finer look and more finer detail. I usually grab it by the head as well. I might actually cut the handle off it one day, but then I'll probably lose it. Probably a bad idea. So just doing circular motion, holding the um, stencil down. I'm going over the black as well as over, well, I'm going over the entire card actually. So doing it this way, because I've oxidised that black with the water and putting black ink over the top of it, it's actually going to be a lot darker. Let me just hold this and flip it up so you can see the bats are starting to form. I want to go a bit darker. As I said, this wouldn't take as long if my ink pad was not running out of ink. I have to go shopping. So you can find all the ink pads at Hillbilly Scrapping. Um, and many other um, retailers as well. But Hillbilly Scrapping and I usually team up and do the craft shows together. We use my chipboard stencils and we use all her pretty paints and inks and pretty papers and things and we do classes at the shows. Really missing the shows. Hopefully next year they go take off in March, which would be so good. So now I've done one side and obviously I ran out of my stencil, but this is a repeating pattern stencil. So I can go and line this up again and continue. So I could do this in over an entire page of um, a 12 by 12 page. Most of our stencils on our website are actually in 6 by 6 size, but you can request them bigger. You can request them up to 12 inches. Um, you can just email me and say, can I have this design in a 12 inch one? You can either have it this small, repeated four times across the stencil. Obviously we repeat it so it doesn't look like it's joined together. Or you can have this blown up so you've got bigger bats on a 12 inch page. So it just depends. So just putting the stencil back down, it's quite easy to, lo quite easy to line up. Oh, one of those bats is out. I just wanted to put a bit more up the top. Ah, oh, there we go some reason I couldn't line it up with the bat. just want a bit more darker bats up the top here. So now you can see it's looking a lot lighter in the photo. Actually, no, it's looking, oh, it was a bit dark down here. It's looking really, really nice. I like doing the ink in the background and then oxidising it. Now, I'm not sure whether we have enough ink on this stencil to do this, but we're going to try it anyway. Just let me grab another sheet of the... Um, watercolour paper. Now as you can see you've got a lot of ink on this stencil. Now I don't know whether I've got enough ink for this technique but you'll get the general idea. So what I'm going to do is squirt my stencil. I'm just going to do it over the paper towel because I don't want to soaking wet my table. So I'm just going to squirt the stencil and you're going to see the ink bead up. So this is a way I clean my stencils. So I'm going to bring in the watercolour paper. I'm going to put the stencil ink side down, drop it straight down and then grab our roller paper towel and just roll over the top of it. As I said, we don't have much ink on there, but we'll see what we get. Hopefully we get a really cool look. So you want to leave it there for about 30 seconds to a minute so the ink has time to penetrate the paper. I don't think we have enough ink on there. Oh, we've got something. Obviously, if your ink's a lot darker, you can sort of see the illusion of these little bats. So what this will give you, this will give you the reverse stencil of what you've done. So let's actually try that on the back. Let's purposely put a fair bit of ink on our stencil. Let's do it this way. 
because I like this oops I like this effect so I'm just going to rub ink over my stencil just going to give it a bit of a rub with the blending tool just to get out any of those harsh lines so now this is nice and black so we'll try this again Ooh, that looks a bit juicier so just straight over you want it straight down you don't want to sort of drop it or have any sideways movement and then we just want to roll over with the paper towel rolling over with the paper towel sort of presses it down seeing what we've got I'm going to roll with the paper towel whoops Take the stencil off, roll with the paper towel. This one's a little better, but as you can see, the um, the bats, you can see the outline of the bats. You get a much better look when you've got a load more um, ink on your stencil. But that's a way to clean your stencils and make some really funky paper as well. You can just, I don't know, can you see the bats? You can just see the outline of the bats. So usually these blobs of ink here will press out a little bit more if you have more ink. But I can see the bat outline. It's really cool. So a good way to clean your stencils and make some pretty fun papers. Now, what are we up to? Put our stencil off to the side. We are up to, where's my sample gone? Decorating chipboard. This is fun. So we've got a house. We've got a chipboard house and we've got some gravestones. Now I'm going to do something different to the house and to the gravestones. So the house I'm going to leave its raw colour and we are just going to use a, this is just a spiderweb stamp. Um, I'm not sure of what brand this stamp is. I do apologise. A lot of my Halloween stuff is quite old. I believe this stamp even is from America a few years ago. Um, a friend sent it to me. This is a spider web and a spider. So I don't want the actual spider. So after I ink it up, I'm just taking a wet baby wipe and wiping off the spider. And then I'm just going to stamp directly onto the piece of chipboard. Oh, that's getting very dirty. Let's put that there so you can see that. So I just want to sort of line it up and stamp it over the house. Now this chipboard is straight as you buy it, straight off the, out of the machine. I've not prepped it with anything. So you can use it in its raw, sort of like crafty colour in some instances. I've even used it on scrapbook pages like that. Now I'm not wanting to get this hard edge on the um, house, so I'm just being quite particular on where I'm stamping it. And then I want to do that one more time. So you can decorate chipboard in so many different ways. I'm just missing a bit in the middle. So let's see if I can just stamp a bit in the middle without making it look, look funny. Okay, so we've got, that stamp can go away. We have got now our little house that is covered in spider webs. Someone needs to clean their house. Now, for these tombstones, the whole three of them we want to cover in Distress Oxide Black Ink. Basically, what I do is just rub the ink pad over the chipboard. I don't do this with a blending tool because A, it takes too long, and B, I want it really, really dark. So you can either put it on the table... I sometimes put it on the table and sort of flicking action and keep moving it around. Again, this ink pad is on its last legs. That's right, it's got enough ink to do this project. And last one. Where are my tweezers when I need them to hold stuff? A bit more on 
the top bit. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to just hit these with a little bit of water just to oxidise them and grey them up a bit. So we're going to be quite far away with our water so we just get little specks. And just a couple of squirts. And if we give that a dry with the heat tool... You can see it's a bit hard to see, but we've got, it's not all black. It's some of it's a bit more of a faded color. Now we are going to bring in the broom stamp we used in the first video because I like the end of the broom. And I find I, I use stamps in so many different ways. Yes, this is a broomstick, but the end looks like really cool, like reeds and grass. So look at your stamps in a different way. You don't always have to use them as a broomstick. So I'm just going to use this, just bear with me while I stamp off. No, I haven't got any stamp from the last project. So I'm just going to stamp the tip of it in. That's a bit much ink. This one's very juicy. I've just re-inked it. And this oxide ink stamps really nicely over the black. Um, that's the great thing about these ink pads is you can actually build up your layers. It's quite subtle, but you will be up. Yeah, you can see that. So this is just giving it an added dimension and we're going to do the same oh, these little things. I keep dropping them. So we're just going to stamp off the Twisted Citron and I want to bring in the Wild Honey and just do the same thing. Just add a bit of interest. So I'm not stamping, I'm just randomly stamping. The more you think about getting a position, the um, harder it gets. And then on, so I find I just hit it randomly. It looks really good. So on this particular one, I've done a shiny skull and crossbones on the stamp. So I've got this tiny little skull and crossbones stamp. This is from a Hampton art set that is, um, actually it's from myartc.com. I don't even know. Again, I bought this from overseas, I think. Um, I have a lot of friends in America and they send me a lot of Halloween stuff because they know I love it. Now, we are going to use an archival ink for this and we are going to get my embossing powders ready. We're just going to use a clear embossing powder over a black ink. So I keep my clear embossing powder because I use it lots in a like a Chinese container, takeaway container, especially with this chipboard because I can just hold my bit of chipboard over the pot. Just trying to open it without flicking it everywhere and just sprinkle a little on top. So I do have a spoon somewhere that I help um, pick it up with. So I thought this just adds a bit more interest to it. So I'm using the archival link because this is quite a fine stamp. And I just want to sort of position it in the middle. Take the stamp off and pretty well straight away put your embossing powder on. Now the embossing powder will stick to the stamped image and I've got a little bit sticking to the rest of the headstone which is not a big issue because I didn't allow my oxide ink to dry for long enough. That's okay. There's no mistakes in scrapbooking. You just slightly change the way you do things. So I would dry off your oxide inks before you go with your embossing powder. So I'm just going to heat this up so it's going to be noisy for a minute. If you've never seen a heat embossing powder, it comes like that. It comes like all little crystals. And then when you heat it up, all the crystals melt and you get this shiny look. I've also used it on the title. I'm going to use the, do the title in a minute. So this takes probably about 30 seconds to a minute. So you just want to heat it up. You'll see it start to change. So you'll see it start to go from crystal to um, like shininess. There we go, it's changing now. I 
Okay, and then we have a little skull and crossbones. Now, it hasn't come out perfect. We've sort of lost, actually, I might heat that for a little bit longer. This is a very low heat heat tool, so it takes a bit longer, but it's also quieter. So just watch, it can get a little hot when you pick it up. Didn't stamp as well as I'd liked, but it's still on there and it adds a layer of interest. Where's the one that I did? So we've also got a few spots of the embossing powder down here, but I don't mind it. I'm not going for perfection when I do things like this. If they look look good, I'm okay with it. So that goes there. Okay, what we're going to do to our um, gravestones is just hit it with a little bit of green on the side just to make them stand out a bit against this dark background. See how that one pops out a bit? So we're going to try to get a little bit on here. Don't have to get it all the way around because I know it's a bit tricky. But that will just make them pop out a little more and just add another layer to them. I love chipboard because you can colour coordinate to whatever project you're doing and you can sit here and fiddle for ages. I could get a little stamp and stamp on each of the gravestones. See how that just pops it up? Okay, now we're going to work on our saying. This one up here. So we're going to just move a couple of things out of the way. No, I need that one and I need that one. Put that over there. Let's just put that up there. I need my card base and I need to grab my Tim Holt stamping platform. And I need my happy Halloween word. So in the first video, I explained what this stamping platform is. So I'm just going to bring my chipboard shapes in just to get the placement of my title. I want to sort of place the house so a lot of that moon is showing. A little bit of this, actually, we might trim it down before we stamp. We are going to trim it down. We need to trim this down. I'm just going to leave all that in there and move it up to the side. Chipboard running everywhere. So we do need to cut this down. So we need to cut this down to five and three quarters by three and three quarters. Inches, these. The only reason I work in inches is um, they're the big lines on my cutting mat. I usually work in centimetres. So we'll bring our stamping tool back in. So I've just got a couple of extra sheets of this cardstock underneath just because my stamps are fraction... Um, this foam is deteriorating, so I do need to replace it, but I just haven't got around to it yet, so we'll make it work. So this one goes down here, this one goes over here, this one goes here, and we want Happy Halloween to be up. Put a magnet there to hold everything down. We want it there. Now, I always do my stamping before I stick my chipboard on. So we'll just pull this over. Oh, sorry, I'm out of shot again. Pull this over. Now, what I did to get this kind of spooky title, I don't know whether you can see, it's got black in it and it's got the twisted citron in it as well and then it's got the gloss over the top. So I stamped this about five times. So you wouldn't be able to do this without a stamping platform because you'd never get it lined up correctly enough. So I did about three lots of black just to get it nice and dark. So as you can see, the first time I do it, you can barely see barely see it. The more times you stamp over it, the darker it gets. Oh, I've got stuff all over my desk. And we we'll probably go once more. Because you're stamping over in exactly the same spot, guaranteed every time, or so you don't shift your paper. Now what I did was just dried that off. 
doesn't take long to dry. Now I went in with the Twisted Citron, but I wanted to make sure I got the black off my stamp just so I didn't put black into my ink pad. I've already done that to one of my yellow oxide ink pads. So I just want to stamp over this a couple of times. Now this um, doesn't stamp completely the Distress Oxide. It sort of resists the Distress ink for some reason, but it was a really cool effect. I thought it would come out really, really bright like this colour here when I stamped over the black, but for some reason it was resisting... Um, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see that. You've sort of got the black in the background and then you've got that Twisted Citron on top. I'm going to stamp it once more. As I said, I thought it would stamp over the ink. Um, maybe if I did black, uh, Distress Black and then the Citron over the top it would have worked but I like this effect too this was a happy accident okay so now that is wet we want to bring in our embossing powder you want to get the embossing powder on pretty quick so it will stick so there you can see can't find my plastic spoon and it sticks to my metal spoon so now you can see we've got that powder on there and we're going to come in and heat that up. You can see the H's are starting to go and it sort of runs, as it gets hot enough, it runs down the word. So when you're heat embossing, you want to move really gently over it. You don't want to do this because each spot is not getting hot enough. And this is a low temperature heat tool um, because it's quieter. Ooh, I like that. We've lost some of the Twisted Citron colour, but it looks really cool. Let's wipe that Twisted Citron off. Now time to put our card together. So we've got our card base. Again, I might just ink around the edges. With the archival ink. Just going to give that a quick heat. My hands are staying pretty well clean, which is a miracle. Usually I'm covered in ink and paint. And just put our double-sided tape on the back of our cards again. Tiniest bit of double-sided tape hanging over the edge, so I was just cutting it off. Now we just want to grab these bits and bend them back. I'm just being a little careful because I stuck this double-sided tape backing under my nail in one of my videos and oh, it hurt. It's like a paper cut under my nail. Okay, so now we're just going to hold this and the reason we can slide this around is we don't have much tape exposed yet. So we're just going to line that up best we can, sounds good, hold it down and press it down. And then we get it fairly straight, straight enough for me anyway. That looks really cool, I love the moon and I love the bats. Okay so now all we're going to do is stick our chipboard pieces on and then this card is complete. So I'm just using Helmar 450 glue. Just got to wait for it to... It's a bit cold here tonight, so it just has to go down the tip. I'm 
So I just want to position that. Just like the idea of that bat showing. So just aiming for the fattest bits of chipboard. Just lining the chipboard pieces up with the edge of that piece of paper that we decorated. So they're sort of sitting up on an edge. And that is our second card complete. Again, this one would be a really easy one to batch do as well. And that looks really cool. Very spooky. And you shown you different ways you can um, play with your chipboard. Thanks very much. So we've got time for a third card today. And this is a little card we're going to make again on the Halloween theme. So we're going to use a few different products from my store again. I'm going to use a web stencil, a 400 GSM die cut, some chipboard and another 400 GSM die cut piece. So I think that's really cute. I like, love Halloween. Okay, so we're going to start with our plain watercolour paper. <coughs> again. And this time we are going to use the purple and lay down a lot of purple in the background. Just trying to find my corresponding sponge. So this is Wilted Violet. So we just want to cover the entire surface of the card again with the Distress Oxide. You can see this one's going on a lot easier because I have re-inked this pad. I'm just going to hold it with this scrap bit of paper. And I apologise in the background, I'm filming very early in the morning and my daughter's bunnies are being a bit active. So I do apologise if you can hear a bit of background noise. I usually pick the middle of the day to film or late at night when they're having a snooze. So they're not loud. Soon they'll be moving back into my daughter's bedroom so they won't be in the corner of my filming area because it'll be too hot for them. So just continuing to do the circles, we want a really nice deep coverage. As you can see, this one is going on a lot better than the black that we've been using. So having a nice juicy ink pad makes your work a lot easier. <coughs> now we are going to... <coughs> excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat this morning. Find my piece of paper towel I've been using. We're going to give this a little bit of a squirt from a distance just to give it a bit of interest in the background. Oh, I just squirted my hand. That was that was good aiming, wasn't it? Just trying to get my roll of paper towel so I can roll it over. So we've just got some nice splattles in the background. Splattles? Splats in the background, which will just add an interesting effect. We haven't got many this side. Most of that will be covered up, and I just want to get a bit more on this side. There we go, that's a bit better. Now we just want to give that a quick dry off. We want to bring in our corner spider stencil, spider web stencil. <clears throat> and our black oxide ink pad and our um, blending brush. I'm just going to put this on an angle because it's a bit easier for me to hold when it's on an angle. We are going to cut this down so I don't mind that it's these big thick edge bits are uh, onto my card. So I'm just going to gently, very gently with this stencil because it is very fine, add some black through the stencil and just holding it down with that scrap bit of paper so I don't get marks all over my fingers. Sort of going more in the channels of this one than all over just to make sure we don't move the stencil because this one is a bit um, more fine. I find the blending brushes are easier to um, use with finer stencils than say example the foam brush. Since I've got these blending brushes, I have used them heaps and will not go back to ink blending any other way. So as you can see, we're getting a lovely spider's web. So I moved it when I moved my card. So I'm just going to line it back up. 
and just come down and add a bit of more black here. So you could go as dark as you wanted to. I just want to go quite light and subtle. And that's what the blending brushes are great for. They're nice and light and subtle. And it's nice and light because this ink pad, as I said, needs to be re-inked. But we're still getting a really cool effect. So I just want to go down these bits again. So if I'm doing long lines, bit this, I follow the line of the stencil. But then I also want to come in just beside it and sort of... <coughs> blend it out so I don't have harsh lines on my page. I think I'm just about done. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks awesome. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat this morning. So now we want to do some stamping on our card and add our eek sentiment. So I'm going to bring back in my Tim Holtz stamping platform. don't need these two pieces of card in here anymore so I'm going to position this in so this is a clear foam stamp from this set but I'm not sure this is from Hampton Art again it's several years old I do apologize just a lot of my stuff is several years old I haven't purchased a lot of new stamps lately I'm trying to use what I have I'm trying to be a good crafter Tim Holtz has some awesome ones out this year and I'm I'm tempted very tempted and I'm trying to be good. And I think if my friend from Hillbilly Scrapping gets them in, they'll be following me home. <coughs> she's terrible. She gets lots of, she's got awesome new products in um, for this event. So just inking this up with um, archival ink. So just a nice black ink. The advantage of this stamping platform is I can go over and over it several times. So there's several different stamping platforms on the market. She has... Um, a different one from Couture Creations. <coughs> Excuse my throat. And it's basically the same concept. You can stamp over and over again in the same spot. So I'm going to do it about three times just to get it really, really dark. And then we're going to dry it off and we're going to make it stand out even more. The reason I've done this with archival ink as opposed to the black soot distress ink, which I could have done it with, distress oxide, I apologise, um, is I want to actually lighten the area behind it. And if I did that with the distress oxide, it will um, make the ink run. So I just want to give this a bit of a heat dry just to make sure it's nice and dry. Now, to lighten at the moment, it's looking a bit lost because it's got, like, the spider web and that behind it. So what you can do is you can grab a paintbrush just with some damp with some water and paint over your stamped image. Now, if you did this with the water reactive ink, the Distress Oxide ink with the stamp, you would actually smudge all your work area. But because I've done it with archival ink, I can paint over it with a bit of water, looking for my piece of... Um, paper towel and just rubbing that on top and you can do that as many times as you like and see how that's lightened it up and it's a lot more prominent now so I could go over that again if I wanted to might go over the top just a little bit so just a little bit up here so you can stamp basically any stamped image on and then actually I'm going to put a halo around this one so I'm going to come just beyond the edge of the stamp and you can lighten up any image then it will look like a moon see how I've just put a halo around it so it looks like a bit of a moon shape now we're going to bring in our chipboard so we've got a chipboard and chipboard coffin outline <coughs> sorry little spider started running across my desk <laughs> we are doing Halloween <laughs> I couldn't have scripted that better could I oh my goodness I don't even know where that spider come from, but he's dead now. I squished him. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And I had to run across in this particular filming. Oh, that is so funny. I can hear you all laughing at me. And that wasn't scripted. I didn't anticipate the spider running across my page. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to do, this is a 400 GSM white cardstock cutout from our website. And we're going to use this coffin as well. The chipboard coffin and the mummy, we are sort of, the, the zombie, we are just going to sort of push inside the coffin. So I haven't glued this together at all. I've just pushed the mummy inside the coffin outline and it fits just nicely. Don't you love filming? Maybe I'll go cut that bit out. <laughs> so now I'm just going to ink this up with the um, Distress uh, Archival Ink. Sorry. I'm not particularly phased if I don't get 100% coverage. And I can hear my bunnies playing with their balls. I wonder if that's coming. They've got little um, plastic balls with bells in them and they love to throw them around the cage and throw them outside the cage. They're like children, the bunnies. They're as bad as children. They misbehave as children. I call them toddlers because they just get into everything. Okay, so I've got a layer of ink on there. doesn't matter if I don't have it completely covered. And then as quick as I can, I'm going to put more clear embossing powder over the top. I like this container one of my embossing chipboard because I can just hang my piece of chipboard over it and grab a spoon and scoop it up. Just making sure I get all the bits of chipboard. And then I don't have to waste any. So for the embossing powder that I use regularly, I do buy in large amounts. And tip you need to hear, this was a big jar that I bought because I use clear all the time. So now just heating this with the heat tool. I'll do it here so you can see it. Starting in one spot. It's starting to turn now. Just watch so you don't pick them up and they are very hot. So I have missed a little bit of ink in the middle. So I'm just going to let that cool down for a second. Oops. Because if you put your hands on the melted embossing powder very quickly, you can burn your hands. It's like liquid. Um, it's like a hot liquid. So I'm just going to take my ink pad. I obviously didn't get it on her properly, but no hassle. Just put some more ink down and grab your powder again mainly wanting to oh, oh, don't drop your chipboard in your embossing powder could hold it with tweezers but i tend to like to do things with my hands i just make sure i have a habit i cover up my embossing powder before i bring my heat tool out As you can tell, it doesn't take long to heat emboss. So that, I like it how it's a bit bubbly. It's not like flat. That's really cool. So we're going to do the same thing with our 400 GSM other coffin. So I'm just going to put some ink on that. This one's a bit easier ink because it's a lot flatter. Oops, I just flicked embossing powder on my table. I like this um, Chinese container because it sort of contains your embossing powder from going all over the table, unless you flick it there. Oops. And we're just going to heat this one up.
so it's done we're just going to pop that up there and that one up there to cool down now we are going to play with our house so these shapes along with our chipboard are reversible you can see on this side there's a little bit more brown marking than this side these are laser cut so they are burnt with a laser when they're getting cut out just got a few little windows I didn't poke out <coughs> so sometimes you do get these burn marks on them and it's just the machine um, cutting the shape if you want to use it white you can just give it a white coat of paint or white coat of embossing powder I'm actually going to reverse it so I actually want my house going in this direction which is actually opposite to um, the direction like this is the reverse side of it technically but a lot of our chipboard shapes and stuff we can turn around lots for words this morning I don't know where my words have gone <coughs> I shouldn't get up early and do things so I'm just going to take my ink pad and just scruff it across the house I don't want it completely black I sort of want it um, black but not sort of gray patchy sort of run down looking so I don't want it completely black because I want it to contrast between the purple and now I'm just adding a bit of ink to the edges I don't want it completely black because it's going to fight with the completely black tombstone we just or coffin we just put together so while I'm doing this we can also make all our sh um, chipboard stencils and stamps and stuff to order so if there's a particular shape you would like you can contact us and say can you make such and such usually the answer is yes um, sometimes it's yes but I'm busy and you have to wait a week or two um, it depends if I've got events and shows coming up um, waiting on the machine to cut all your orders now we're just going to cut this down to size where's my black card Here's my black card so I need this to be um, I'm going to cut it off this side so this needs to be three and three quarters by five and three quarters It'll give us a little bit of a uh, border so definitely contact to contact us through the Facebook group or through our website there's an email address there on the top of the website and you can request just about everything the only thing we can't do a lot of is trademarked items so I can sometimes that's really really crooked Melinda um, so I can sometimes get around trademark and we can do things that are similar but sometimes we maybe it's my card that's crooked let's get another card base um, sometimes trademarked items are just a no-no because I can be sued by companies especially Disney they're really on to people I've heard of um, people in America getting sued to make Disney um, embellishments so we're just going to take a little bit more of this as I said cutting like this is not my forte <laughs> after investing some of those dies I can die cut all my layers with and make them look beautiful there we go that's good I always measure off each individual card base because even though I've cut these sometimes they don't turn out correct for some reason now I'm just going to ink around the edge of this again just to make it stand out a bit and double sided tape I'm just going to flip the double sided tape off and do my taily thing so I can line it up correctly the two shorter sides I've just pulled off for quickness today so just going to line this up there we go and pull that bit out pull that bit out awesome now this will be dry by now so this will stick here and where are our I moved my embossing powder and lost where I put my chipboard shapes so now our embossing is dry 
or cooled down I should say. So one is going to go there and one is going to go there. So now we've just got to glue these on. So we're just going to use our good old 450 glue. Now these two chipboard shapes actually aren't stuck together so I'm needing to put glue on both. Just waiting for this gel to move down. It's a cold old morning here. What is wrong with this glue today? Sometimes it will get a little bit of skin on the top of it and it won't come out because it's dried. Ah, there we go, it's coming. Just wanted to take its sweet time. So just going around the shape, getting it on both the coffin and the mummy. Or the zombie, I should say. It's not a mummy, it's a zombie. And just putting it on the side and then going to do the same thing with the 400 GSM cardstock. I stick the 400 GSM. I haven't stuck my house down. Uh, let's stick the house down first. And then we can tuck the house. Come on, let me do it. Tuck the house back. I'm going to line the house up with the corner or the edge of my card front. There we go. I find this 450 glue works really well for the 400 GSM cardstock as well because it's a bit thicker. It's nice for layering pieces. So if I put a chipboard house under my chipboard coffin, it would actually, um, I've got more of my house showing, but that's okay. Let's do, and I didn't position my ink very well. That's okay. Her coffin has just fallen on the floor. I forgot when I position this ink, I usually put my chipboard pieces on to work out where it is. But that's okay. It still looks good. No mistakes in crafting. We just slightly change the way things look. So we've got beautiful coffin ink cards with our chipboard pieces. And I love that these top pieces are shiny. It's nice to have some, um, some shiny pieces on it, some middle tone pieces, which is the house, and then the background, which is the background so thank you thank you very much for watching um the pieces that i've used in the stencils i've used are in a folder called grey strain craft show number six and they'll be on sale for the month of september for the month of september after the show and then we will um pop them back in our range but we thought we'd pop them in a special folder so you can easily find them thank you very much for watching and i will catch you again bye for now